Good morning. Thank you for participating in this virtual, strange, bizarre GMF seminar. We've never experienced these virtual meetings before, but we are getting used to this, unfortunately, this year. We hopefully will meet um, in person maybe next year. Um, so maybe now I can give the, the floor to the president, to Mrs. Pia Armstrong. Welcome you all to this seminar. And uh, I hope uh, it, it will be interesting. First uh, seminar we do this way in this organization. So welcome. Okay. Um, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, thank you for uh, having me. Um, invited to your uh, to your yearly uh, seminar. Uh, we had initially planned to welcome you in Brussels, but uh, this could not um, this could not be. So um, without uh, the benefit of offering you uh, uh, a nice setting and uh, coffee and biscuits, I hope that, that my presentation uh, will uh, will inter be interesting to you. Um, I am Jean-Philippe Guisset. I'm working for the European Commission in uh, the Directorate General for Energy in Luxembourg. And um, my unit um, deals with um, all nuclear technology, nuclear investment, nuclear or radioactive waste, and uh, decommissioning of uh, nuclear facilities. I'll see if the screen sharing is working well. Can you see my, my presentation? Yes. Okay. yes. Okay. So the um, Within this, the, the framework of the Euratom Treaty, the European Union has developed um, a comprehensive legally binding framework on nuclear safety. There are several um, elements, um, one of, from a safety perspective, the most um, wide ranging is the Nuclear Safety Directive that has been um, adopted in 2009 and um, then updated in 2014, uh, which concerns all uh, nuclear installations. And in 2011, and, um, Council adopted the Waste and Spent Fuel Directive. And I will mostly discuss this um, piece of legislation, not from a legal point of view, but to explain what is the, the, the objective of, of um, this directive. The, the main objective of uh, this um, directive is at ensuring the safety in the back end of the nuclear cycle. So the decommissioning of nuclear installation and the management of radioactive waste and spent fuel. Doing this without undue burden for future generation and with uh, enough public information and participation. The, um, the, the end, um, end results, the um, radioactive waste repository will stay for a long time or a very long time, and it's important to build a broad uh, public um, support for those installations. The principles which are um, embedded in this, in this directive um, include minimizing the generation of waste as far as practicable. Um, it's a the, the, um, the directive covers all the, um, the, the nuclear cycle, so from generation to disposal, um, because to limit the amount of 
uh, radioactive waste in the end, one should think from the very beginning how to how to handle this issue. Uh, it um, includes consideration on long-term passive safety feature so that the mm, radioactive waste repository stays safe um, whatever happens in the future. The cost of the management of the radioactive waste should be borne by the organization who has generated the waste. Um, and it's the responsibility of each member state to make sure that it is so. There is also an all element on how decisions should be taken. Uh, it should be evidence-based, documented, um, and involving multiple stakeholders. In 2019, the Commission issued the second report on the implementation of this directive. And uh, so you have on the top right corner the, the references of the report itself and two staff working documents, so detailed technical documents, analyzing what the different member states have done um, related to this waste and um, spent fuel directive. Um, what is being analyzed is um, what the different member states have um, transmitted to the commission. They have to write a report on what has been done in their country from many different point of view. Um, what legislation they have developed, what plan uh, has been um, set up, and um, also how much waste is there and um, how much waste um, will be produced in the future. So on this slide, you see what is the inventory in 2016 for all the, three, the 28 member states at that time with in 1000 cubic meter the amount of radioactive waste so 603,000 cubic meters of very low level waste and uh, around 2500,000 cubic meters of low level waste. This waste is typically disposed of um, near the surface. I hope it is it is okay like that. So to continue, there are much lower quantities of intermediate level waste and high level waste, which are typically disposed of uh, in um, very deep geological layers. And separately, we account for the spent nuclear fuel, which is um, um, inventoried in tons of heavy metal, so tons of uranium. Um, and at the, in 2016, the inventory accounted for 58,000 tons of uranium. On the right side, you can see um, what are the projections for the future, which shows that um, most of the volume of the radioactive waste um, has been already um, been invent inventoried and only um, additional volume will result for the from the decommissioning of um, installation which are still running now this this report this second commission report um, conclude that uh, all member states have made um, very big progress in defining uh, what are their plans for the management 
of radioactive waste and uh, spent fuel. But in several member states, uh, important decisions uh, needs to be taken about the, the policies, the concepts, and, and the plans for the future. And the Commission is pressing those member states to uh, not delay uh, those decisions. Another element which is important is that each member state needs to ensure that the adequate funds for um, the management of the radioactive waste will be available when it will be needed. At the moment, some of the member states, so Finland, Sweden, and France, um, are forerunners actually on a, a worldwide scale in developing the final disposal for high level waste and spent fuel. And uh, they plan to have their disposal facility operating in um, the next 10 to 15 years. All other countries, while um, make, making research on uh, how to, to develop such a disposal facility, are, have planned much more in the future um, about when it would be um, it would be available. This is partly due to the fact that they account for long process of uh, public involvement in those decisions. Nuclear decommissioning, the European Commission has um, made several studies about um, how this activity will develop and um, in the 15 EU member states where um, nuclear energy has been a part of the energy mix, we can find 108 reactors which are operational, four under construction, and already 64 that have been stopped and are now in decommissioning or safe store waiting to be decommissioning and only three that have been fully decommissioned. So this shows that the work on decommissioning will increase in the following years, which you can see on the right side. The blue, the thick blue line uh, shows the, um, the importance of the decommissioning market in the next year. Um, and as countries are uh, shutting down their um, operating plans, uh, decommissioning will take more and more importance. Um, this, this market is, is very important and um, the, the commission want to um, encourage the European companies to uh, participate in this market in Europe and then also worldwide. The decommissioning of uh, nuclear facilities relies on proven processes and technologies um, and need to be further developed at the industrial scale. Um, because until now, while those technologies exist, they have not yet been applied on a very large scale. But this is this is coming in the in the following years. There are still uh, research and development needed on a few um, limited um, issues. Um, like the dismantling of graphite moderated reactors. Finally, I would like to say words on a program 
where I'm particularly involved, which is the Nuclear Decommissioning Assistance Program, where, um, as an exception, the European Union is supporting financially the decommissioning of eight reactors that have been shut down when uh, Lithuania, Slovakia, and Bulgaria joined the EU. In the meantime, the dismantling has progressed to an irre irreversible stage. And um, the objective of the programs will be met with the allocated budget in 2014-2020. And additional budget in the next MFF will, um, so in 2021-2027, will allow for two, two of those uh, programs to reach their end stage um, in Bohunice and Kozlodui. Um, and we'll bring the decommissioning of the Ignalina nuclear power plant close uh, to its end, uh, which is planned at the moment in 2038. So thank you very much for your attention. Um, if you would need more information, uh, all the documents I have mentioned are also available on our website. Thank you, Mr. Gise, for your presentation. It was very clear and very comprehensive. I'm pleased to see that you already excised the United Kingdom from your map of Europe. Uh, <laughs> fate that we deserve, uh, although personally, I would rather we were still part of the <laughs> European community. I have lived with the process of a geological disposal facility in the UK for oh, 30 years or so. The process goes through many incarnations which recur perhaps every decade. Currently, our government, through the Nuclear Decommissioning Authority and its subsidiary, subsidiary radio, radioactive waste management, is recommencing the process again. I live in Cumbria. I sit now two miles from Sellafield, where the bulk of the UK and indeed the bulk of Europe's waste is situated. I've got to tell you that the process is still slow. It is deliberate and the people are being, as they should be, are given the, the opportunity to participate. Um, I would say that the, there is an overall reluctance, even here in Cumbria, to uh, agree to this process. Um, so I think our government and the NDA and RWM have a difficult task on their hands if this is to go ahead. I thought I would just give you that brief synopsis of the situation in the outlying country of the United Kingdom. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's not with, uh, with any special pleasure that we... Um remove the UK from the map or uh, from our uh, inventories. Um, and you're right, uh, you, the UK has a very important inventories of radioactive waste, so it will, it will definitely change the, the, um, the general outlook of our uh, report. Um, and you're also right that in most of the countries, uh, it's a very difficult discussion about um, how, what are the plans uh, for the radioactive waste and the spent fuel? Um, but it's a necessary discussion. Um, we we think really that um, uh, such plans uh, should have uh, as broad as possible uh, public support. Thank you. I don't know if there is any other question. Mariano, you wanted to ask a question? I think. Are you looking me? Uh... Yes. <laughs> I, I thought so, but <laughs> you can speak Spanish, so and and it yeah. will be translated. 
I, I uh, uh, thank you. I, I, I would like uh, uh, to ask to Mr. Gizet about uh, how the European Commission is controlling the uh, um, the fulfillment from the countries to the obligation to uh, implement participation systems in the waste management uh, policies in the different countries. You know that the European Directive talk about the right of the participation in the decisions and uh, the, the countries have to report to the European Commission how they are implementing the, the directive. I don't know how uh, the European Commission uh, is controlling that uh, that policies are implemented. And, and, and at the same time, I would like to know if it's possible to have this information directly in your website or something like this uh, to uh, compare the different decisions in different countries and how the local, uh, local level take part in this. Thank you for your question. Uh, con concerning the radioactive waste and spent fuel directive, until now, the European Commission has proactively only controlled what the member states were doing based on their own reports. Uh, if, you, if you have elements that make you think that um, some countries would do something completely different than what they are reporting to us, then uh, we, we should probably um, find another way of uh, controlling the, the compliance with, uh, with those rules. Um, not on this subject, but the European Commission is um, from time to time uh, addressed to by uh, citizens or organization that find that the rights have not been respected um in terms of public consultation so at that at that moment then we are looking into this issue more in detail next year now our plan is still to have the gmf general assembly next year in brussels and then we would like we have the mayor of Borsele here so we would like to go to Borsele. we will visit the radioactive waste management facility cobra there and also the the nuclear power plant this was the intention this year to have a technical visit and, and share some time together. So I hope the invitation to come to Brussels is still open for next year you can, and we can have a nice program uh, focused on the commissioning. I, I, I think so. And uh, definitely Barcelona is a very interesting place to, uh, to visit. So I wish you a very um, a good um, follow up in, uh, in this meeting, but unfortunately I need to leave you here. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Gifford. Thank you very much. First of all, uh, I'm also very grateful for the presentation of uh, Mr. Guisset. And of course, I'm also, uh, as there was a question coming from the United Kingdom, I'm also very glad that uh, even members from the United Kingdom and Russia and other countries not inside the European uh, Union are uh, joining our group because our concerns goes further and the borders of the European uh, Union. Uh, when it's about nuclear safety, we have to look all over Europe, we have to look all over the world. So we go to the very small municipality of Dessel and a lot of uh, few people, a few members of GMF, they have visited uh, my municipality, but I'll give you, and I'll talk a little bit slowly because I see there is a translation for our Russian friends and also the Hungarians, I suppose. Well, um, we started uh, the discussion about the law and the intermediate short living level waste uh, more than 20 years ago. Uh, we started longer before, but 20 years ago, we started what we called a partnership between the, the local uh, municipality. It was the municipality of Dessel and the neighbor municipality of Mol that we involved a lot of people, uh, companies, uh, all kind of uh, representative groups to, uh, to see whether the disposal could be in our municipality. 
So what's the situation for this moment? So first of all, about the law and intermediate short li uh, living level, uh, it's uh, coming to a point of, I should say, no return. We are constructing, we are building, we are starting uh, the, the disposal site. So the decision was taken by the federal government in 2006, it's more than 40 years ago, and it was after seven years of local partnership. The license to build all those infrastructure is given by the Flemish government. That's the government that's uh, involved about uh, constructions, uh, uh, giving the licenses. But the nuclear license is to be given by the federal government. And uh, they, they also, uh, uh, we have the, what we call FANC, it's a federal agency of nuclear control. Now, uh, that is in progress, and uh, probably that license will be given in 2022, so in two years. But as I, to uh, I told you, this is the way we want to go to uh, when the license in 2022 is given. What you see is uh, a bunker inside, uh, and in that bunker uh, comes those monolites, but I'll tell you afterwards. Uh, underneath the bunker, we have a small cellar uh, that is for uh, controlling the site for the next 300 years, whether there is water coming inside. And during the exploitation of these bunkers, there will be uh, an iron uh, wall and a roof over those bunkers as long as they are not uh, finished. When the bunkers are full, there will come a concrete uh, roof and afterwards uh, also clay and other kinds of uh, materials. So we create in our flat country, a small hill. So this, these photos I show you are very recently. What you see on the left hand side above, it will be the, uh, a concrete uh, factory where we, concrete, uh, where we uh, build those boxes. Uh, at this moment, every all the waste is uh, in barrels, and in one box will come four barrels. The box will also be filled with concrete, and that is what we call in the EPM. That's the big building you see in the middle of the picture. Uh, the next slide, please, uh, Mary. Uh, to enter the, the place where the bunkers will be, we have what we call an entrance cluster. Uh, the building will be finished in the first part of 2021. As you see, uh, we are really uh, building and making things ready for 2022. Next. That's what uh, we call the... In English, the box factory. So concrete boxes will be constructed here. All materials will also be transported by ship. So we have uh, not the nuclear uh, materials, but concrete, sand, uh, et, et cetera, will all be uh, transported by uh, ship because we are in the neighborhood with a small canal. Okay. Uh, the, uh, the big black uh, building you saw, it's what we call the installation for the production of the monolites. So the box is coming inside here. Uh, in this building that's really uh, good protected, there we will enter four barrels in uh, that concrete box. The concrete box will be filled up with concrete and afterward transported to the, uh, to the definite uh, solution in the bunkers which is just uh, beneath this situation. What we also have is uh, what we call a communication center. Uh, it shows as a small uh, building, but uh, a very big one. It's called Tableau. And Tableau is, uh, it means a table. You see, it's a big table. Uh, underneath, we have three floors where we have uh, a lot of uh, things also for the local people, a concert uh, hall, uh, there is a room for a, uh, for exposition about everything mattering uh, nuclear nuclear and radioactive uh, uh, material. Yes, the next that's also in Tableau. There's an exposition will be built there, and it's the 
it was one of the the things that the local people asked that there was a lot of uh, communication that uh, people could go there to see what was happening but also that uh, uh, organizations could or uh, could have meetings there etc it's a, what we can call a new community center these are also pictures from uh, that community center you see also a big uh, green field uh, maybe some of you know, but every year on that spot we have what we call the GMM, Grass Pop Metal Meeting. It's a very popular international uh, festival. This year we had no festival because of Corona, you know, but it's very internationally and it's also on that spot. Okay, what's the current situation in Belgium? As you see about uh, low level waste, uh, we are uh, on, good, uh, on good trial. But uh, the intermediate, uh, long living and high level uh, waste, that is still a discussion. Uh, last time when we visited uh, Dessel with GMF, we went uh, also to the hardest project. That's a, a project, it's in the clay, 210 meters deep. So we are still discussing what we will do with our high level waste. Now, since last week, we have a new government after uh, more than 400 days. We have a new government and uh, the new government is asked to make a decision. We also saw in the presentation from Mr. Grisset that all countries have to make uh, their solutions. And you saw in the schedule, you saw in the presentation that Belgium was not mentioned in that schedule. So we didn't have, uh, did ha didn't have uh, a clear, clear decision by now. Uh, we are discussing location. The project in clay is in Mol, is near Dessel, but there is no decision where the disposal should be because also in other places there are clay undergrounds. If he knows also in Do there is clay. Uh, so uh, first of all, we have to make a decision. Are we going for uh, the? Are we going for a disposal in uh, the underground? Or in the, the geo, are we going for a geological? solution or not and when we go for ge geological solution that's the second step there so recently the federal agency of nuclear control she they said yeah 210 meters is maybe not deep enough we have to go to 400 meters but of course the deeper we go the higher the price so no location is already chosen uh, but the new government, she will start up the procedure. In a co uh, it, it is in the coalition agreement from last week. Now, I go a uh, small presentation. This is the last slide. What is the situation in Belgium for the moment? Uh, Yves is uh, participating. Yves is from Beveren. It's the municipality of Doel. So in Doel, we have four nuclear installations, four nuclear plants. In Tihange, in the south of uh, Belgium, we have three. And you see uh, what amount of power they create. It's more than 50% of R, of R, it's written wrong, O U R, sorry, uh, electricity. And the governments decided we stop in 2025. So it's in five years by now. And that's the big question. Will we have electricity? And uh, at this moment, they are planning more wind, more sun, but also gas installations. That's the situation for the moment in Belgium. Thank you, Chris. Um, you have a question in the chat. Maybe you can answer through the chat uh, area as I well. Open yes. the chat. And we can maybe move because I, I guess we will no, not have time for not the, as much time as we wanted. So you have uh, several questions. We can, yeah, okay. Excellent. I will do in the chat, okay? Okay, so maybe we can move now to Sweden if Pia is okay. Yes, thank you. Okay, thank you. I will give you a short summary of the energy politics in Sweden from last year's events. There's a proposal from the Parliamentary Commission on Energy uh, 2014 to 2017. The government aims to create a long 
long-term sustainable energy agreement due to national uncertainty about the future energy politics. So in June 2016, National Framework Agreement on Energy and Energy Policy, Parliament's decision was goal 2040, 100% renewable electricity production. This is a goal, not a deadline for banning nuclear power, nor does it mean closing nuclear power plants through political decisions. Nuclear industry decisions due to economy, low profitability and low market prices. That Uniper decided to close down Oscar Sam nuclear power plant block one and two in the year 2015 and 2017. And the state-owned Vattenfall has decided to close down Ringhals nuclear power plant block one and two in the year 2019 and 2020. And from a total of 12 reactors in Sweden, it's now down to six reactors in production. In the future, there's a need of more electricity in the society and for the industry. At the same time, there is a lack of electricity, electricity power production. Sweden have, like in Germany, big problems with transmission with a national grid from north to south. This is the biggest challenge for the future. In fact, we have large companies that uh, are very concerned about uh, new um, investments because they don't know if they, they will get enough of it electricity, and especially in the south part of Sweden, where I live. Because of the pandemic and COVID-19, there is also a need to stimulate industrial renewal in Sweden. They call it Restart Sweden. That's industry and government together. And the energy solutions are vital part in this work. The long process regarding a final repository for high level waste in Sweden and it has been going on for 25 years. In 2011, an application from industry for a final repository, according to the KBS tree method in Östhamma municipality, it's about 130 kilometer north from Stockholm, was handed to the governmental agency for nuclear and radiation safety. A legal process according to the Environmental Act and the Nuclear Act have continued until 2020. A national governmental decision is a priority issue for the two municipalities concerned, Östhamma and Oskarshamn and KSO. A lot of experience and knowledge on the local level among politicians, civil servants and inhabitants. We see this as a national responsibility, which has been taken on local level. The Swedish model for stakeholders involvement is as following. It's full openness, participation and influence from the local level. The regulatory authorities are our experts and the nuclear waste management, SKB and the regulators, which was confirmed at the IAEA technical meeting in November 2018 in Vienna, learning from local stakeholders involved with RWM programs. Uh, then Östhamma was selected from the nuclear industry as the prime location for a high level waste repository. In Östhamma, the executive, executive committee decided for an un conditional proposal to the government, which recommends that nuclear waste management, the ESCOBE, to establish facilities for final disposal of spent nuclear fuel and nuclear waste from the Swedish nuclear power program, according to the KBS3 method at Forsmark in Östermann municipality. The municipality will not exercise its right of a veto However, a municipal approval is required. 
final municipal decision in council will be taken in an extra meeting in October the 13th this year, 2020. Some priority issues for the municipality. The national government must take a long-term responsibility for the final repository facility. On June the 10th and 2020, the parliament decided on amendments to the laws which clarifies the state's responsibility for certain nuclear facilities, which includes the high level waste repository. The local environmental impact that has been taken into account have been measures to protect human health and the environment, transport and noise, fully financed so that the municipality can be an active part, openness and participation on local level, infrastructure regarding all types of traffic types and mods, competence building and long time skills supply. Oscar Sam has also affected of the process and decision. The central interim storage club has to be extended and the building of an encapsulation plant at CLAB for the HLV will be built. Thank you for your attention. Now we move to Slovenia. So Miran, thank you. Yeah, good morning to everyone. So I would like to discuss about four topics today. Um, as you know, as you may know, in Slovenia, we have only one reactor and it has operational license until 2023. Uh, they are trying to prolong this operational license until 2043, that means additional 20 years. And they made a lot of investment in uh, nuclear power plant to achieve this. But at this moment, we are in the end of the uh, final uh, repository for uh, low and mid waste. Uh, and also, there is a 97% uh, of uh, fuel or spent fuel storage is also full. So it means that they have to do something to uh, increase the capacity or to do something with this waste. So they are uh, going to talk about the final repository of uh, low and mid waste. Uh, it is full about 95, 96%. And uh, they started to the process of uh, building a final repository in year 2005. In year 2009, the consensus of uh, local community and local decision was taken that the final repository is allowed in our municipality. <laughs> Now uh, we have 11 years waiting and uh, this year a little bit move forward was done in construction. So now they are in the midst of construction plans and uh, they are trying to achieve the license to build. I hope that in the next two years the final repository will be finished or maybe in three years, who knows. And uh, that will be um, the, the one of the most important milestone in, in this process. If they are they are not will be they are not able to build or finish this repository, they should uh, close down the nuclear power plant. At the same time, we have problem with uh, uh, spent fuel. As you may know, this uh, spent fuel is now in the wet storage in the nuclear power plant itself. It is 97% full and uh, they have to do something with this. Uh, after Fukushima incident, uh, there were a lot of uh, different improvement in the nuclear power plant done. And uh, also the, there was discussion about how to solve the problem of the spent fuel. Uh, there is a good solution to make dry storage or dry spent fuel storage that is uh, not permanent, but it is uh, uh, storage will be which will be for the next few 
next, I don't know, maybe 100 years, who knows how, how long. And uh, there is a process of uh, getting permission for, to build a dry storage for the spent fuel. Uh, now they are in the process of uh, building permission to get getting uh, building permission. Uh, the local uh, municipality was also involved in this process because at first they have to uh, get some permission to build this in in this area. So they got it, and now they are waiting for the building permission. Uh, location will be on site. Uh, it should be finished until 2023. It is not very complicated building, complicated building, and I think that is a real plan. It is, uh, it could be achieved in, until 2023. Uh, now we will look in the future. Uh, our new government, which is now in in action, uh, approximately eight or nine months, uh, they accepted. Uh, National, national energetic plan. That is very important document because it recognizes uh, nuclear power as uh, important source of energy for the future. We have about 30% of uh, energy in our energetic system uh, produced by the nuclear power plant. Uh, about 30% uh, is from the coal and the rest is from the water power plants. So when we close or we shut down the nuclear power plant, there will be a, a big lack of energy in our nuclear system. So uh, recognition of, of uh, nuclear power as the possible source of energy is very important for the future of nuclear power plants in Slovenia. Uh, a nuclear power plant is now in acquiring energetic permission for uh, the new nuclear power plant that is the first step of building a new nuclear power plant. Of course, it is not a short process, but I think that uh, when it started this year or now, it should be in the system in 10 or 15 years from now. But that is a very important step in, toward the new power plant in Slovenia. And uh, the last topics which, which I would like to let you know is uh, municipality compensation. We have uh, compensation for the present of uh, presence of uh, nuclear power plant in our municipality for many years, but it is all the time a question of the uh, amount which we are getting and the source for, from where we are going to get this money. Uh, this uh, compensation is regulated by the government and the source is usually a nuclear power plant and the fund which is associated with the nuclear power plant. Uh, now we are in the middle of um, changing of this decommissioned law of fund uh, and uh, there is tendency of uh, minoring uh, influence of the local municipality on the fund. So we in the future, it's a question if we could could have a member of the board from the local municipality, or of um, or we can, what we can do, or what influence uh, are go we going to have in uh, this fund? So this is the question of next few months uh, if the this law will be accepted by the government and by the national national um, politicians. So this is short report of the situation in Slovenia. Thank you. Thank you very much, Miran. I hope that we can, we are able to visit you next year and then you can expand further on this. If there okay. are any questions, please uh, use the chat area before we, so we have to move on and then maybe we have time for some Q and A. So I move now to the Netherlands, to the mayor of Borsele. Gerben, I'm going to share the presentation. Yes, thank you. Well, actually, we're supposed to be in Bosla today, uh, visit visiting the nuclear power plant in the Kova, but unfortunately, this cannot, uh, due to the uh, COVID situation, which is uh, why I shall briefly explain the situation uh, regarding the nuclear dossier in the Netherlands. Um, here in the Netherlands, nuclear power has been a topic that was not discussed for, for decades. 
There were many demonstrations against nuclear energy in the 1980s and the 90s, and um, that influenced the discussion for a long time. Um, over the past five years, a future-proof uh, energy supply has been a major uh, political topic here. Nuclear energy has been uh, kept out of that uh, discussion for a long time, but it has been discussed again in recent years. Uh, the current situation is that the majority in parliament now believes that uh, nuclear power is a ser serious option for the future. Um, here in the Netherlands, we have uh, uh, several nuclear re uh, reactors, but on, uh, one is uh, used for power generation, which is here in Bosch. You see it on the picture. Uh, the re uh, remaining reactors are used for uh, isotope production and uh, research. Um, the power plant in, uh, in Boschle has a license until uh, 2043. Uh, uh, no, 34. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, this is laid down in the Nuclear uh, Energy Act. Extending uh, this lifespan, uh, as I said, is now a major political is issue. To do this, the law must be amended. And of course, uh, there has been a lot of uh, research to do. And they have to talk to local communities and regional boards. Um, the construction of uh, new nuclear power stations is also again on the political agenda. And I think uh, that uh, this will certainly happen in the future. Then we go on to the next one. Yep. Here you see a picture of our uh, uh, storage um, of nuclear waste. Um, uh, we have in a little, uh, relatively little radioactive waste uh, in the Netherlands. And because um, there is a specialistic knowledge required, we have uh, built in 1982, or made a choice in 1982, that we have to have one organization to manage all the waste at one central location in the Netherlands. And, uh, it's called COVRA. You see it here on the picture. Some of you have visited already. Uh, COVA stands for Central Organization for Radio Radioactive Waste, and it's based here in Bosnia. Um, in contrast to uh, disposal in uh, uh, facilities in other countries, you can simply visit this company and get a guided tour. Uh, also, debates and exhibi exhibitions are also organized on a regular basis. But I hear uh, uh, my colleague of Dessel and I uh, hear they, they have plans also to do that. I'm very happy about it. Um, COVA continues to take care of Dutch radioactive waste in order to protect people and the environment. All uh, radioactive waste is safely stored by COVA in uh, specially designed uh, buildings for at least 100 years. The waste is insulated in a central place where it can be controlled and monitored. So that safety is guaranteed for that long period. And ultimate, ultimately, the waste must be housed in a final uh, uh, disposal facility, but that is planned, uh, uh, I think, in about 100 years. We, uh, we made st uh, uh, st studies of that. Uh, between 2011 and 16, a study was carried out uh, uh, in the Netherlands to determine how final disposal of radioactive waste can be achieved safely, as I said. Uh, the program uh, uh, examined uh, final disposal uh, in clay layers and uh, cell formations. The advice is to take the decision on the form of final disposal around the year 2100, which uh, when the in uh, intervening time will uh, effectively be used for research and to involve the public in a decision on final disposal. You could say we have a lot of time ahead. Um, for me as a mayor, the subject of nuclear safety is particularly important. I do not know exactly how this is regulated in other countries, um, but uh, here the mayor has an important role in crisis management and in radiation incidents. Over the last few years, we've updated all our crisis plans and we practice regularly with other partners such as our Belgian neighbors. Maybe we can go to the last slide. Um, as I said, we would like uh, we would have liked to see you in uh, Barcelona. Uh, it's good for me to say uh, to see and speak to each other today digit digitally. 
And I hope that next year we will have to, the opportunity to meet each other here in Boschelen, IRL, as our chairman says, in real life. And I hope that in the meantime, we remain healthy. See you next year. Thank you very much, um, Garvin. Uh, we hope to see you next year. And we are very interested, I'm personally very interested in this exercises on emergency that you were talking this crisis uh, also involving the neighboring countries like Belgium so we should explore this further this is my my personal interest but yeah this well, networking and links you're welcome okay the, this is uh, one of the topics that we should also bring on the table of GMF as well I see there are a lot of radioactive waste management topics going on in the different countries but also emergency is one one of them Thanks a lot. So now we can move to our Russian colleagues. Thank you very much for being here. And we give you the floor, Nikolai. Mr. Nikolai. Uh, good morning, dear colleagues. Мой английский не настолько хорош, поэтому помогать будет мне Наталья Баскакова. Nikolai's English is not so good, so that's why Natalia, it's me, I will uh, support him. Спасибо большое за возможность участвовать в семинаре GMF. I appreciate so much of the possibility to participate to GMF or workshop. Вопросы, которые обсуждаете, интересны для нас. Well, issues which are in the agenda are very interesting for us as well. Кратко хотел напомнить о нашем фонде от ИРС. First of all, I would like to provide a brief information about our association of nuclear facilities. Он создан в 2013 году. This fund, this association was established in 2013. И объединил 15 территорий. And it combines 15 territories. На которых проживает около 870 тысяч человек. We are the population is about 870,000. Эксплуатирующие организации все все блоки атомных станций являются концерн Росэнергоатом. The operator, the utility of all nuclear power plants in Russia is Росэнергоатом. Сейчас у нас в эксплуатации 38 блоков, установленная мощность около 30 гигаватт. Well, at the moment, 38 nuclear power units are in operation in Russia, and the installed capacity is, is uh, 30, uh, 30 uh, gigawatts. Ну, у нас ситуация, в отличие от Европы, государство поддерживает развитие атомной энергетики. Well, in comparison with the European countries, the situation is right in Russia is quite different. The matter is that the government supports the development of nuclear industry in Russia. И ключевые события, которые были у нас в 2019 году и в 2020 году, это ввод новых мощностей на территории России. And the main and key events will happen uh, last year and before is uh, putting, uh, putting into operation and commissioning of new power units. Так введен в промышленную эксплуатацию первый в мире плавучий энергоблок Академик Ломоносов установленной мощностью 70 мегаватт. Well, the, the first floating NPP Academic Ломоносов was put in, in operation. The, install, the capacity is... Um, 70 мегаватт. Данный блок дает не только электроэнергию, но и обеспечивает теплом северный город Певек. Well, these power units not only uh, provides electricity for uh, not only generates electricity, but it also uh, supplies uh, heat to the northern town Певек. Состоялся физический пуск энергоблока номер 6 поколения 3 плюс с реактором ВВР 1200 Ленинградской АЭС в Сосновом Бару Ленинградской области. The advanced generation 3 plus power unit with VVR 1200 uh, unit 6 of Leningrad MPP uh, was um, reached the first criticality in uh, Сосновый Бор. Ведется сооружение двух энергоблоков с реакторами ВВР ТОИ на Курской АЭС, город Курчатов. Two power units of VVR ТОИ are under construction at Kursk. 
В Новом Воронеже успешно эксплуатируются новые блоки ВВР-1200. И сегодня у нас в Новом Воронеже открыт первый международный проектный офис по обучению иностранных специалистов. And concerning Novo Voronezh, at Novo Voronezh site, two advanced uh, power units are in operation, and uh, so uh, we, it, it's a really successful operation. And also we have another key event uh, at Novo Voronezh, the International Training um, uh, Center for Training of Foreign Specialists uh, was established in Novo Voronezh, and at the moment the specialists from uh, um, um, from uh, Turkey and Bangladesh uh, are here on the site for training. Вот основные события, которые были у нас вот за этот год. Well, these are the key, the main events well happened at in Russia well uh, during the last year, last years. Ну вот те вопросы, которые сегодня обсуждают, проблемы вывода блоков из эксплуатации, также нам интересны, как я уже говорил. As, and as he mentioned before, the topic of the uh, online uh, workshop, decommissioning and uh, storage of um, spent fuel are also, uh, for us, are also challenging and interesting. Спасибо за внимание. Thank you for your attention. Спасибо. Thank you very much for all this information. Uh, we hope also we can learn more about the association. Um, you became a new member only last year. So we are very interested also in um, strengthening our relationship about learning more about what is going on in Russia on the different areas in radioactive waste, in new nuclear, in training, as you mentioned as well, is an important topic. So we hope we can continue actively um, encouraging you to, to to be part of our meetings. And, and, and greetings from here, here, Eurajoki. It's quite rainy day here, but uh, I like to tell about uh, our nuclear highlights in Eurajoki municipality in my point of view. Uh, of course, uh, first, uh, I want to tell you about our long term cooperation between TVO, which is our power uh, company, and, and, and Posiva, which is, which is uh, final disposal company. Uh, at the moment there's two power plants units in operation and one is under construction as you very well know I suppose and, and the uh, last one will be operation in 2022. Uh, here in Eurajoki first power plant unit has been in operation since uh, 1978 and, and, and those uh, two power plants uh, they they are uh, they are very well operating power plants and and of course there's very high safety culture in Olkiluoto. Uh, there's also in Olkiluoto an interim storage for spent nuclear fuel and a repository for low and medium level waste and final disposal tunnel uh, Onkalo. Uh, and the uh, final uh, disposal for spent fuel uh, will be operation in in 2024. Uh, this is the uh, schedule at the moment. Uh, we have a very active and open communication between TVO and POSIVA and, and, and their uh, main policy is uh, unconditional uh, transparency which has developed necessary confidence in this area. There has been many seminars and public info sessions at the site and, and in Olkeluoto there is also a visitor center and, and there is about uh, 15,000 visitors every year. At the moment, because of coronavirus, it's not open, but uh, it will be open after this uh, corona situation will be over. Uh, and uh, about the trust, uh, uh, here has been uh, official information and public hearings, uh, which is organized uh, by the Ministry of Employment and Economy, uh, Radiation and Nuclear Safety Authority Stuk, and, and Eurajoki Municipality. Uh, so I can say that there has been a lot of information about nuclear issues and and uh, and 
uh, and other, other nuclear things in, in this area. Uh, and uh, there's also active and open dialogue between municipality and the TVO uh, from the 70s. And, and uh, we have also cooperation group of Eurajoki municipality, TVO and POSIVA since 1995. And, uh, and we are looking at this nuclear thing here in Eurajoki that uh, uh, we have opportunity to build a Eurajoki brand, the most electrified municipality in the world. Uh, we see this thing uh, in this point of view. Uh, and uh, what uh, are our trust conclusions for acceptance here in, in Finland and, and especially in Eurajoki? Uh, of course, safe management of nuclear waste is a precondition for nuclear existence and new build. And uh, at the local level acceptance uh, plays key role when, uh, they, they, when they select it, decide for spent fuel disposal. Of course, a long time is needed uh, for acceptance. Uh, acceptance uh, and, and uh, it's uh, very uh, helpful if municipality in question has already nuclear facilities like we have had. Uh, and locally in nuclear municipalities, people are much more better informed about nuclear issues than the national level. Uh, and communication has uh, been ongoing since the uh, power plants were commissioned over 40 years ago. So when, when we talk about uh, uh, trust conclusions, uh, uh, decisions, uh, decision uh, on geologic disposal is scientifically and technically informed uh, and social and political process uh, which with trust play, plays uh, a key role. And, and, and the trust between uh, us uh, has developed during decades. Uh, TVO and POSIVA are always done what they have said, so I can truly say that uh, they have kept their promises. That's, that's the big thing. And uh, here are the uh, four issues, uh, issues what uh, are highlights in, in Eurajoki municipality in my point of view. Of course, the safety is the first one. Uh, there has been long-term cooperation. Uh, and there has been a lot of communication and information about, about uh, nuclear issues and final disposal. And, and that, uh, those things uh, are developed that we have very strong trust between us. So shortly about Finnish way and Eriyoki way to do cooperation uh, uh, between nuclear power company and, and uh, final disposal company. Thank you Thank very you. much. To Spain, I think I give the floor to Mariano. It will be quite different from the previous presentation, I think. Thank you. Um... I will try in five minutes, as we have been allotted, what is happening in Spain. In Spain, the situation in five years has undergone a radical change, 180 degrees change. Five years ago, the nuclear future was prolonging the operative life of our nuclear power plants, and we were envisaging building a centralized deposit for spent fuel and enlarging the capabilities of our low and medium level uh, radiation waste management uh, uh, facility. But now everything has changed. All our nuclear power plants will close. The one in Garonia shut down in 2017 and it was uh, the commission, Therita uh, was decommissioned in 2016, and then by 2027, we will decommission the power plants in Almaraz, and in 2030, ASCO and Cofrente, and in 2035, Trillo and Vandellos will be decommissioned. This is the result of the national plan for energy transition, 
a national plan sets an energy mix for 2030 of 50% renewable sources of energy, the disappearance of coal fuel based uh, will disappear, we will re reduce uh, 70,000 megawatts down to 3,000 and the maintenance of gas uh, for electric uh, production, 28 gigawatts with gas that we will keep and maintain. So it has been a change in this plan. And this decision also says that in 2050, 80% will be of renewable sources and the rest of it gas. Nuclear is to be to disappear. It has disappeared in the government plans. There is a decommissioning and dismantling plan that has been agreed upon between the government and the electrical utilities companies. So the future looks quite irreversible because if the electrical companies have signed this agreement of uh, dismantling and decommissioning nuclear power plants, logically, we don't expect anybody to change anything about it. What does it mean for us? What does it mean for us? Well, this logically entails a great concern for the future of our municipalities. In Spain, the members of GMF have visited our country in different occasions and they have seen how nuclear plants in Spain are located in areas which are depopulated. They have very low number of inhabitants. The building of a nuclear power plant has determined very strongly the economic uh, income in said areas. The disappearance of nuclear plants in the short term because the 2030 is just around the corner will entail uh, uh, the search for alternative economic income and activity outside of nuclear plants, which is going to be difficult. The government has uh, foreseen these changes in the energy mix, but it has also concomitantly approved a national plan for fair transition. And in this national plan, they set up specific policies at the geographical areas where the nuclear plants will be shut down. There will be agreements between the local authorities, the state and the different uh, economic agents that may act upon the said areas to foster the activities of uh, new uh, economic endeavors. These agreements uh, have just started to work for the coal areas. The electric companies have decided to shut down the coal centers. Some of them have been shut down and they have already started to work on fossil fuels with coal. Uh, the nuclear plants uh, are in the list. Theoretically, we should have started, but we don't still have a clear calendar or agenda from the government. From our own Spanish organization, AMAC, the Association of Municipalities have under our own initiative designed plans of uh, alternative economic activities, alternatives for the shutdown of nuclear plants. We have designed for Garoña and in Burgos in the north of Spain. We have some plans and we have set up a technical office in order to develop some projects. And in Zorita, in the center of Guadalajara, where we are actually physically meeting now, we have already a plan, an action plan by the Spanish Association, AMAC, and we're going to set up a technical office. But I repeat, we haven't received any direct collaboration from the government or from the state. Nothing coming so far, but it's true. We are in direct contact with the ministry, the central ministry that assumes responsibility and the authority concerned. And in principle, everything should start soon. 
of course, the situation derived from the pandemic and COVID has affected everything and has affected this as well. And it will be difficult to get started with it. Some issues will be delayed, but we are. We are in direct communication with the ministry and the authority on energy to know what the situation is. On a parallel basis, and RESA, which is the Spanish agency that manages radioactive waste and RESA, has presented a new plan on nuclear waste management. The situation in Spain doesn't change so much with the new plan. In fact, in the new plan, what we foresee is uh, extending the low and medium level activity waste uh, in Cabril, in Córdoba, that have been foreseen in the other plan and foresees the building of a new interim storage uh, installation for spent fuel, which already existed before. We have one deposit in El Cabril and in the municipi is called Ornachuelos. We visited uh, with a seminar in Ornachuelos and some of you attended there. Well, this municipality now has an ongoing dialogue with Enresa, the national company for waste management. And we have already considered steps for enlarging it and extending it. Licensing the municipalities issues for the extension capabilities, there are many questions that refer to economic advantages on enlarging the capability of El Cabrel. Well, AMAC, our Spanish association is involved. Ornachuelos obviously is a member of AMAC, the Spanish Association of Municipalities. It's the very beginning, but we're working on it and the storage of spent fuel facility. What the interesting thing is that we start from a failure. In the past, in Spain, we searched for the location for a storage of spent fuel and we had chosen in Cuenca with no prior nuclear facilities. And I agree with Yura Joki in the major, it's always, easier to go to a municipality with nuclear experience to set up a new facility, not uh, in a town where there is no prior nuclear experience. They chose a non-nuclear location and we had a lot of problems. The decision-making process in the time did not respect the principle of the participation of the regional society and the state was not active enough in its communication policies and it led to a failure. Right now, the current government has stopped completely the licensing process for this new storage. The municipality was called Villar de Cañas. That's where spent fuel uh, facility was to be built, but no, it has been stopped and arrested and it's considered as failed. It is a failed project right now. So the new plan for waste management resources considers the possibility of a new facility for spent fuels and says, where are we going to build it? It's an open-ended question in the situation for AMAC, the Spanish uh, Municipality Association has to be on top of it, you know, to watch the ongoing process and what decisions are reached on the location. In principle, the news we have so far, the rumors, the, uh, that we're getting is that the uh, central government takes into account current municipalities with nuclear experience to set up this new facility for spent fuel storage, but there's no firm official proposal. There is no procedure uh, that sets in the new plan how the decision will be reached. So we're now uh, uh, facing an uncertainty, uncertainty. There are too many doubts right now. So that's the current situation in Spain and what we're facing right now. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mariano, for this overview of many of the many different nuclear topics going on in Spain. 
and uh, it's quite an unfortunate situation i would say with the storage facility but we can discuss this a bit later on and uh, so now i give the floor to chava all right so i would like to welcome you all uh, on behalf of the Ford hungarian association uh, which uh, representatives are in this uh, room some of you have probably realized this is the uh, board of the Elizabeth Hotel where we had the General Assembly of GMF a couple of years ago. Uh, so here we have the leaders of uh, uh, three associations, say that in this, uh, and we have also the representatives of uh, ETAT as well. First, let me give you some words about the Tactical background, I mean the nuclear background of our country, but some of you have been familiar to this because you have visited several times of our country. So you uh, you know that uh, we have one nuclear power plant here in Bokstown, in Bokstown, uh, where we have four reactors, Russian type, BB specialized water type, and they produce almost 50 percent of the domestic electricity generation. And uh, uh, you might also know that uh, here at this site, uh, we are planning, the Hungarian government planning to have two new units. That means our country relies on, on nuclear energy and it would like to uh, supply uh, the electricity from this way of, uh, of source, uh, which is uh, really reliable uh, with a very low carbon uh, release and uh, actually it's, it's uh, really safe. That will be the new one, will be 3, point, uh, three plus generation unit. Uh, I would like to say also some words about uh, the radioactive waste management and storage. Uh, so the representatives of the, these associations are coming from this part of the country. In the north part, we have final storage facility for institutional radioactive waste in the center of the country where we have the nuclear power plant near the nuclear power plant we have an interim storage facility for spent fuel this is a dry storage facility not very far from from the nuclear power plant roughly 40 kilometers south we have a final storage facility for low and inter intermediate level waste. And in the even southern part of the country, uh, we have an area where which is a possible place to host the high level radioactive waste uh, from the nuclear power plant origin. Dan, but, sorry, do, do you know that we are not um, yeah. seeing how the slides move? Do you want me to share the presentation? Yeah. Facilities. Okay. I will. I will. I will yeah. share the presentation because uh, we cannot see. Okay, actually, so you cannot see the slide, but anyway, I can tell you uh, the the text instead of it. Uh, now you can see. Okay. So I've just uh, presented the four associations. Here in Hungary, it is typical that uh, we have uh, not only one uh, town or village in, con in connection with the operator, but we have an organization of uh, towns and villages which are relatively close to the facilities. Therefore, you can see that uh, there are roughly 10 uh, municipalities in each uh, association, and you can also see that uh, how many people live in these regions. So the aim of uh, these organizations is that to have a right to control the the facilities, the operators. Even just today, the head of the communication of Fox Nuclear Power Plant cannot be here because there is a, a municipality a control committee at the nuclear power plant. And they are uh, controlling uh, the the water usage, the cooling water usage in the nuclear power plant. And also, they have 
the, the uh, important part the communication. Uh, so actually, these com uh, control committees not only have right to, to visit the plants, but they, they take measurements, radiation, for example, at the uh, storage facility. So uh, some of the uh, citizens can, can have this kind of quality, qualification. Uh, in, many, in many places, you can find uh, environmental monitoring systems, even displays uh, at these different places, and it's also good for, for the plant building process. Okay, next page, please. Okay, so uh, just make conclusion about the communication. So we think that these municipalities are bridges between the, the operators and the and the, the municipality uh, citizens. And, and uh, these associations have frequent meetings, and they can organize forums, open days, public hearings. Uh, and they have a very good and close, close contact with the operators. Uh, unfortunately, just like in case, just like in case of uh, uh, the GMF, most of the programs have been cancelled because of the COVID-19. Uh, but uh, they have uh, brochures, they have newsletters, even they have uh, local TV networks. So they are trying to to uh, supply information to the citizens and. Uh, in the conclusion, it is very similar to the ones we just heard from Euroyaki, because they think that the plant building is a key issue in the process. And also, uh, uh, they are equal partners, actually. And uh, they, they, they've been working together, these uh, mayors, with the operators for, for decades, uh, with, with, the, with the operators, and they have a very good close contact. Uh, and from the communication part, once again, so the basic of this trust is transparency, because these partners have to be uh, true, truthful to each other, because this is the basic of the good <coughs> cooperation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Zava. We understood in the end perfectly. So um, we now move to the UK, our last presentation. So Phil, if you're ready, I'll, I'll share the presentation. Thanks, thanks Mary and uh, good morning everyone, or I think it's afternoon where everyone else is, but it's still morning here. <laughs> so, uh, um, and it, it's also nice to see a couple of my um, colleagues from the UK have joined. We, we haven't had others in the UK in GMF meetings before, but it's good to see a couple of uh, recognized faces as well. Um, so I know I've only got a short time uh, if you could just move on to the next slide, please, Mary. Um, very briefly, in terms of New Leaf, like uh, a MAC, we are a, a network of municipalities, of local authorities. Uh, but I think, perhaps differently from some other networks in, in Europe, we, we very much focus on decommissioning and uh, the cleanup of legacy nuclear wastes. Um, there is a new nuclear program in the UK, which I'll say a little bit about but we don't bother with that so much uh, as an organization. Uh, next slide, please. I, I wanted to show this just to um, give, give a, a, a an understanding of the, the scale of the, the nuclear industry in the UK. Uh, we, we have a lot of nuclear infrastructure. We have a large number of uh, closed former nuclear st uh, stations that have been cleaned up. We have uh, a number of uh, current nuclear stations run by EDF, Energy de France, um, and we have uh, one large new nuclear station under construction um, and possibly others, although the situation for that is, is quite complicated. In addition, we have a, a lot of defence nuclear installations and other research and, uh, and waste management facilities and health facilities as well. So. There are a lot of uh, nuclear communities in, within the UK. Uh, next slide, Mary, thanks. So I wanted to talk about um, two main issues, really, uh, the, the current situation with decommissioning and also the, uh, the program for geological disposal in the UK. In terms of decommissioning, we're at a, a time of, of change um, I've just come from a government meeting. Uh, I dropped out of this meeting to go and 
hear about the, uh, the plans for a new policy covering all areas of nuclear cleanup in the UK. Um, and we also have a new strategy by the, the body, uh, the Nuclear Decommissioning Authority, that uh, is charged with cleaning up the, the legacy nuclear plants uh, within the UK. Uh, but the, the main things that are happening just now is uh, there are plans to speed up the cleanup of a lot of nuclear sites. Uh, the previous plan was just to leave them for many decades to, um, to allow the radiation to decay and then they would be cleaned up towards the end of this century. Now they are looking to clean up some of them uh, in the short term. Uh, and that's obviously very interesting for municipalities because it gives opportunities to use the sites in different ways in the future. The other thing they're talking about is in the past, they all said they would clean up all the waste on, on sites. Now for a lot of the low level waste, they are talking about leaving that on the sites to decay. And again, obviously that has implications for uh, the next use of, of, of the sites. Um, just a couple of other things to say from this list. Uh, it is a big nuclear program in, in the UK. The, the Nuclear Decommissioning Authority spends about 4 billion euros per year in cleaning up sites. There's been a lot of criticism from parliament that they, they are not getting the best value for communities and for the environment and for the economy. And so we're very much involved in, in seeing how we can improve that situation, not just jobs, but also wider benefits for communities. Uh, the UK also has a target to be net zero carbon by 2050. And uh, even within the nuclear decommissioning field, there's now discussion on how uh, that can be done in a way which um, does not uh, impact more than it has to on, on carbon. And the last things to say in terms of decommissioning is, uh, I said we have a number of EDF sites. They are going to close starting in 2022, so very, very soon. And there's a discussion about how they will be cleaned up, who will pay for that, and who will oversee that process. So that, that's a big decision for government uh, that will be made probably in the next few months. Um, and lastly, we have we had plans for a big new nuclear program of big new nuclear plants. Um, because of the current situation and the lack of interest from some of the big um, uh, companies, Japanese companies that were, were meant to be part of that, that's less certain now in, in many places, but there is discussion about um, small modular reactors. So these are small nuclear reactors. I'm not sure if these are being thought about in other countries in Europe, but that's, uh, that's an issue that's under consideration here. Uh, next slide, Mary, please. And the other thing I want to say about decommissioning is about Sellafield. We, we've talked as, as GMF about a, a future visit to Sellafield and I'd, I'd really recommend it. It's, uh, it's really quite something to see the scale of and the complexity of what there is at Sellafield. It's the most complex site in, in Europe. There's about 10,000 people there. Um, they reckon it will cost about 70 billion euros to clean up the site. And every time they look at the estimates, they go up not down uh, so it's it's very complicated and this goes back to the fact that uh, the site has been operational since the 1940s uh, they really didn't manage the waste in a proper way 1940s right through to 1970s and so the picture is of what's called one of the legacy ponds where there is highly radioactive material that has decayed and uh, needs to be removed the the, the facility itself the ponds are not a, a safe structure either. So there's a lot of activity that needs to be undertaken uh, quite urgently there. And the last thing on top of all of that, we have the most fortified building in the UK, which houses 140 tons of plutonium sitting right in the middle of the site as well. So lots of different uh, cleanup issues there. Um, thanks, Mary. Um, on the other side, in terms of waste management, we've just uh, in the last few years launched the new siting process for geological disposal. Uh, we're in the early phase just now where communities and municipalities will engage with uh, the developer. There'll be discussions, they'll get some money, it's very similar to programs in other countries in, in many ways. They will then have the opportunity to agree to move forward or not in the process. And then it'll be about 100 years to, to, to move forward and actually 
put the waste in there and uh, close the facility. Uh, last slide, please, Mary. So uh, we have this new GDF process. This is the third time in the UK we've tried this. Um, very jealous, as I think Mary was saying earlier, about what's happening in Finland. Uh, we, we haven't made nearly so much progress in the UK. But we have a new process. We have just in the last few months, uh, two municipalities have formally entered discussion with the developer RWM. They're both beside uh, the Sellafield site. Uh, but I've just come from a government meeting here where the developer RWM is suggesting that others may enter in, in the coming months in other areas of the country. So we may have a, a proper siting process involving a number of different communities, which is interesting. Uh, two last issues. Um, because this has taken so long, I think quite rightly a lot of communities that are storing waste just now are saying that the, the government needs to recognise what they are doing with community benefits and so on, that they're going to have that waste for many decades to come. And lastly, there is a lot of discussion about development of near surface silos or vaults to take some of what's currently planned to, to go in a GDF. So the GDF is still definitely needed, but there may be some other developments uh, in, the, in the shorter term around that. So that's a, quite a quick run through quite a lot of things happening in the UK. It's a time of big change anyway, but um, thanks for the, the time to speak to you today. Thank you very much, Phil. Um, yeah, it's, it's strange to have these kind of meetings. We've lost some of the people. They had other commitments. Of course, we understand. Um, it's tricky to be online a lot of time. So I don't know uh, if anyone has an urgent question. Otherwise, um, maybe Pia, we can close the meeting now. Um, I know it's exhausting, these kind of meetings for the whole morning. Uh, but I'm very glad that we could have this opportunity. Maybe it's a new way to start communicating with each other, um, at least uh, when we are not able to, to see each of us in person and to have the visit. Thanks, Phil, to remind us that we are welcome to Sellafield as well. So next year we will have a busy agenda with Crasco in Slovenia, Brussels and Belgium and, and the UK, all these things are open for us. So I hope we will have an opportunity to meet in person. So now I will leave the, the word to Pia to say the closing, some closing yes. words. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I would thank you, Maritel, for making this possible. It was uh, very well organized and uh, it went out much better than we thought. We, always, we, we thought it would be good, but this was uh, better than good. And I will also thank you all who participated, both you that just listened and you who have uh, very interesting presentations from your country. And a special thanks to, to our new members, Finland and Russia, who also had uh, very interesting presentations. So, um, we hope to see you next year in person in Brussels in October. So thank you so much, all of you.